In this video, we want to prove that the sequence, the nth root of n, converges to 1. So let's get a feeling for what this sequence looks like. So first of all, we would have, of course, the first root of 1, and then the second root of 2, the third root of 3, fourth root of 4, etc., which would mean if we look at decimal expansions of this, we would have would be a 1, of course, and then we'd have a 1.414 approximately, right? These are all approximately. Uh, the third root of 3 is about 1.442, approximately. And the fourth root of 4, meaning, of course, the number that we need to multiply with itself four times to give us 4, must be the same number that we would have to multiply with itself two times to give us two, right? So we're back, we're back here, interestingly. So 1.414. And the fifth root of 5 would be 1.380, etc. We'll write that one in there, too. These are all approximate. And this is going to converge to 1. Now, the interesting thing about this is we start at 1, we go up to 1.414, we go up further to 1.442, and then we start going back down because we have to get back to the square root of 2 here. And then we go down and down and down and down and down until we get very, very close to 1. So the graph of that looks like this. Now the interesting thing about this is that it actually, as we uh, just mentioned, goes way up and then slowly, slowly down. So the question would be, or an interesting question that I'll leave for your own research, where is this point here? Where is the maximum point there? That is an interesting question. Now you can do this with a calculator and keep zeroing in on whatever the highest point might be. Or maybe you want to just take the derivative of this function and see where the slope is uh, flat. Either way, I'll leave that up to you. That's an interesting question. Let's just prove that this series, or this sequence rather, converges to 1. So, let epsilon be greater than 0. Let n0 be something. We don't know yet what. And then for all n greater than n0, we have... So this is what we want to show. We want to show that the nth root of n minus 1 is going to be less than epsilon for all n greater than some n0. Okay, so if we don't add on our epsilon there yet and just say, what is our first step going to be, it's tough to see what it would be. How are you going to simplify that? So let's rearrange what it is we want to prove. So this is what we want to prove. Let's get this into a different form. Maybe we can get rid of the uh, nth root of n and get rid of these absolute value signs, get it in a form that's a little easier to work with. So since n as a natural number, especially as n gets larger and larger, is always going to be greater than 1, then this here is always going to be greater than this here. Right? So we can just leave off those absolute value signs. Now, let's get this 1 here away from this nth root. So this nth root is going to be on a side all by itself, which means if I raise everything to the nth power, I can get rid of that. So that would be 1 plus epsilon, right? Now again, if I raise this both sides of this inequality to the nth power, I end up with n less than 1 plus epsilon to the n. And this is the statement that we will be proving instead of this one here, which is harder to work with. 
So in other words, 1 plus epsilon to the n is greater than n. That's what we want to show. So let's get started. So we can just multiply this out, right? Just using binomial expansion. So that would give us 1 to the n times epsilon to the 0 times n choose 0, right? And then 1 to the n minus 1 times epsilon to the first power times n choose 1 plus 1 to the n minus 2 times epsilon squared times n choose 2 plus a bunch of other stuff. Now, what I would like to say at this point is that I think that's going to be enough. Because this n choose 2 here, let's take a look at that. n choose 2 is just equal to n factorial over n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. And if we simplify that, we can get an n times n minus 1 on the top. All of this here on the bottom just cancels out, and we have it divided by 2. The important thing is, we now have an n times an n. So in other words, we have an n squared. And all we're wanting to do is show that all of this stuff here, at some point, is just greater than n. So for large n, n squared is always going to be much larger than n. So this is probably all we're going to need. So let's just go ahead and say this is greater than, and we're going to leave all this stuff off at the end here. We'll simplify. That's a 1 and 1 and 1. So 1 plus, that is just epsilon times n, right? Since n choose 1 is n. Plus, that would be 1 epsilon squared times n choose 2, which we can just write in this version here, which would be n times n minus 1 over 2. Now, at this point, we can substitute n for our n, or rather we can just say this is greater, because we know that n is greater than n0. So let's do this here. Actually, let's write our n minus 1 in front. And we'll write here epsilon squared times n 0, since we know that n is greater than n 0, over 2, because we're just about through. We, let's look at the development of what we're doing here. We want to somehow show that this is greater than n, right? That's what we want to show. And we've got an n minus 1 right here. And we also have a plus 1 here. So if we could just show that this thing is greater than 1, then we would end up with n minus 1 plus 1 being n, which is what we want to show. And then this would be more than we need anyway. So let's do that. When is this going to be greater than 1? So epsilon squared times n0 over 2, I need to be greater than, actually greater than or equal to, but let's just go with greater than, greater than 1. So I could rearrange that, multiply through by 2 over epsilon squared, I get n0 would have to be greater than 2 over epsilon squared. Okay, well let's just go ahead and write that in. Let n0 be greater than 2 over epsilon squared. Then that would mean that at this point I could just do this. Like I said, we're not going to be needing that. We can just leave that out for now. Plus n minus 1 times epsilon squared over 2 times. Now we just said that n0 is greater than this here, so we can write that in. And that cancels wonderfully here, right? So that just means that that's a 1. And we end up with 1 plus n minus 1, which is, of course, n. So we've now shown that this is greater than this, which is exactly 
what we wanted to show. So that is how you can prove that the nth root of n converges to 1.